pivot like that or can you go pen string? Can you go pen string? Uh, maybe. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, I want to thank Thomas for inviting me here, talking about Dash. And I'm pretty excited to talk about this topic with you guys and the many people came so I'm pretty excited as well. Um, gonna start off with the history of Dash. So Dash was founded in uh, February 2014 and it had a different name. It was called um, Darkcoin. It was founded by this guy which is the uh, founder and, and main developer of Dash, Evan Duffield. So the core team, the developers of Dash, came up with the idea that this name Darkcoin is not uh, the perfect uh, name for Dash or for the future plans of this cryptocurrency because people often associated the name with the dark markets. And at this time Dash was actually a privacy-centric cryptocurrency and people really uh, could have used it for dark markets because uh, there were not many privacy-oriented coins at that time. But in 2015, the team do, uh, did a, this rebranding and now Darkcoin is called Dash. Uh, it is short for digital cash. So let's compare Dash with Bitcoin for a minute. Uh, Dash is basically a fork of Bitcoin. Um, they both use the proof of work algorithm. Uh, Dash has a different one and the block time is two, two and a half minutes and the block reward is around five Dash as of today, so on average. So the total supply is around 80 million coins. Why is it, why say around and not exact number? Because Dash has this um, variable block reward where if the, hash, if the difficulty of the network uh, goes higher, uh, the block reward uh, goes um, down, so, and vice versa. So you can't determine the exact number of coins which will be created at the end of the time. So, um, but there will be around 16 to 18 million coins uh, at the end, maybe. Um, so Dash has this um, all the Bitcoin functionalities and in, in, it introduces more uh, functions which are instant transactions based basically sending transaction and getting confir confirmation in two seconds and unlike Bitcoin uh, it has this unique decentralized governance structure which we're gonna cover later and has this built-in anonymous transactions so Bit, uh, Dash is not that privacy centric like Monero or Zcash so they are not emphasizing on how private the, the coin is but still you have as a user the, the possibility to hide your transaction on another blockchain so it's a neat feature um, the master nodes yeah, this is the main word the main part of the Dash network the master nodes are the most important part for all these fun functions uh, which the network offers so master nodes uh, are basically a second layer network which runs over the blockchain. We still have the miners, but the master nodes, they don't mine block blocks, they just provide services for the network. Um, basically a master node is a full node which keeps a full copy of the blockchain locally. They use this for synchronizing reasons with other peers. It, they run in peer-to-peer -peer network and they provide all these services I talked about earlier, the governance, the instant transactions, and the privacy um, features. They all run over this network, not on the blockchain. And each one of these nodes, in order to have one as a user, or if you want to run a master node, you have to provide the collateral um, in exactly 1000 Dash. Uh, which today, with the today's price, is around $70,000. So it's pretty expensive to run a master node. And this, these dash, they get deposited and you don't have access to them until you run your master node. So, so what's the uh, correlation?
collaboration between block reward and master nodes. Dash has this unique block reward system where not the whole reward goes to the miners like uh, in, for, instance, for example Bitcoin. So only 45% of the block reward go to the miners. The other part, uh, uh, the 45% goes to these master nodes. They get this um, each time a new block uh, gets created. And the 10% of the block reward um, go for funding of Dash related projects, which this 10% are part of the governance structure of the network. Uh, more on that later. Mm -hmm. So this is a basic uh, graph of the number of master nodes in the network. Uh, currently we have around, they have, you know, I don't have any, around 4,400 and 80 master nodes. You may wonder uh, what happened here. Why is this big? Well, in January, Dash had this major update, software update, and master nodes which did not update, they get they went offline because they are not running on a blockchain. If you don't update your, your client, you just go offline. You know, so you have to update to go on online again. And recently they reached their all-time high again, I think. So it's going up, this number. So let's do some basic math so you, so you can get a picture of how much money are deposited in these master nodes. So as of today we have these 4,400 nodes. So each one of them has to provide uh, 1,000 dash as a collateral. So if we have around 4 million and 4.5 four million dash which are locked up and can't be accessed by users or on exchanges or, or anything. So the current supply today is 7,200,000. So the half of these coins are part of the master node network. So basically we have less than a half, which is um, you, you can buy on exchange or send to anybody, which are accessible by users. Um, this also um, is probably good for the uh, stable for the price, which, because so many coins can keep the price more stable than other coins, or, or keep the price higher because nobody sells these coins to anybody. So, what do these master nodes provide as a service? They provide these private send, or previously called dark send transactions which is the privacy part of the network. These instant transactions where you can send a transaction to anybody and the, the, the guy on the other side will get a confirmation and in less than two seconds. And they provide, they're part of the voting mechanism on the decentralized system, uh, governance system. And the master nodes are the only participants in the Dash network which uh, who can vote on proposals. So I'm going to explain the proposals later. Um, so private sense. So I'm just briefly going to cover the private sense function. Um, basically this is an uh, extended version of the Bitcoin coin join <coughs> uh, mixer. So basically this dark sent private sense is a mixer which is built in, in the Dash network. Uh, dark send is as a user if I want to um, mix my coins with other people uh, I send I ask the network okay I have 100 dash please um, split my funds in common denominations like 1 dash 0 0.1 0 0.01 dash and mix them with uh, other coins from other users. You will need at least three people to be willing to mix their coins so you can mix the, uh, the coins with everybody. And this, all of this uh, has to happen ahead of time before you transact with anybody. So you first mix your coins on your private address, which is in your core wallet. And after that, you can send your money, which are totally private, to another person. So everything <coughs> happens in the wallet. This, this is not a third party service. This is provided by the Dash network, by the master nodes. 
And so each time you ask the network, okay, mix me my coins, then randomly selected master nodes, um, mix your coins, and send and send the coins back to um, to the participants. So you may ask yourself, okay, maybe the master nodes know who sent the money. Yes, um, currently the master node is capable of logging their transaction history. So. Um, that's why people say, okay, Dash is not so private as thought uh, um, in, when you compare it to Monero. But Dash offers these rounds of mixing where you can mix your coins up to eight rounds. This means that eight times the network will choose ten random nodes to mix your, your coins. Um, so each time you mix your coins one more round, it gets more difficult for the master nodes to log or to find out who mixed these coins. So why Dash offers this mixing functionality? Because it provides fungibility, unlike Bitcoin, where you can actually people say, okay, some Bitcoins are have a higher value than others because they came from the dark market. And Dash say uh, provides this fungibility and provides this level of privacy for the users which is, let's say, good enough for the average user because as a normal user you can't trace the transaction from a private uh, sending address so this is basically the, the Dash Core Wallet which is a Bitcoin Core Wallet with a Dash skin on it and it provides these additional functionalities like dark send where you can say amount of rounds, how many times you want the, no the network to mi mix your coins before you send it to anybody. So everything is, uh, you have to pay for these services, higher fees than normal, than normal transaction on the blockchain. So basically this is dark send. Uh, it's a mixer uh, built in, in, a, in the network. So instant transactions, so let's say uh, user A sends a transaction to user B. In the meantime, the network selects again 10 master nodes and these master nodes verify your transaction and send the confirmation to B and say, okay, this uh, transaction is valid. So B gets instant transa uh, transaction co confirmation in a matter of seconds. And in the meantime, these master nodes create this uh, transaction log, um, which is later ad added to the mempool of the blockchain where it gets included in the next block. So these transactions, um, this uh, helps for, uh, with the double spending problem, this transaction log. Uh, you may ask yourself, okay, if I send uh, a, again a transaction to another person, uh, another 10 master nodes would be selected probably. Um, basically, each block, uh, once you use um, the instant send functionality, for this block, for this block, uh, which is the time of two minutes and a half, only these 10 master nodes can provide this service for you. So the, if you want to choose another 10 master nodes, if you want more privacy, you have to wait for the next block. So these are basically the instant transactions. They happen on the top, on the second layer of the network with the master nodes. And when the transaction is ready, they send this confirmation to the blockchain to get confirmed over there. But you don't need to wait for this confirmation on the blockchain because you get this transaction log, which is uh, enough um, for the user and for the for both users to verify that this transaction is already irreversible. So, why do, do does the community want this function? Um, basically, um, Dash wants to be the cryptocurrency used on point of sale where you can buy your coffee and you don't want as a merchant to wait uh, for five or ten minutes depending on the Bitcoin block uh, for to get a one confirmation.
So if you basically buy a coffee, go outside and um, spend uh, the same amount of money um, somewhere else, you may be able to double spend your money in the case of Bitcoin. And these instant transactions don't allow, allow this to happen. So they're preventing this double spending problem in retail. Um, so the governance, this is um, the interesting part. Uh, why, what are the main problems with cryptocurrency? Uh, the governance, obviously Bitcoin, SegWit Unlimited, this is this constant fight between them. Um, and this slow decision making sometimes is, is not efficient for the blockchain. So Dash wants to solve this governance problem and the funding problem where the core developers uh, don't have to get paid from a third party like Bitcoin where uh, they get the, their money and their funding from a third party. So Dash wants to provide the funding from their blockchain. Um, more on that now. So basically this governance mechanism in Dash works in four steps. So as a user, anybody can uh, send a proposal to this network of master nodes and say, okay, I propose to create a Dash wallet for Android phones. I need that much money. So you send this proposal to the network, the nodes uh, vote on your proposal and say yes, no, I don't like it, maybe, sometimes, um, and if your proposal gets approved, you get the funding from the blockchain and you start developing your project and then you deploy your project, project basically. So Dash put the uh, called a DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. So this is the basics of the governance in Dash. So let's get back to these 10% of the block reward, which are basically called the treasury. So 10% go uh, a reserve for these projects uh, which I mentioned earlier. So 10% of these funds are dedicated to projects which are proposals on the network and as of today uh, we have a half a million dollars available for funding projects on the blockchain so this treasury is, uh, is a, the amount of money which is created in one month um, on the blockchain, on the Dash blockchain so which each with each block reward, which is on an average five dash, you collect all these um, block rewards uh, till the end of the month, and and you um, collect this ten percent of the total amount, which is half a million dollars right now, or six point six thousand uh, dash as of today. Um, so, how do you submit a proposal on this network? Um, so, as a user, anyone can send a proposal. You just need the Dash Core Wallet, which is a full node wallet, which downloads the whole blockchain on your computer. Uh, to submit a proposal, you have to pay a fee. This is basically preventing spam attacks or unnecessary proposals to the network. Currently, it's 5 Dash, which is um, relatively expensive for a proposal because you're going to have to pay $350 right now to send a proposal to the network. And you're not sure if your proposal will be approved, so you may lose this, this money. So this became a problem in the recent months because of the price spike. So uh, earlier it was around $50 to send a proposal to the network. So these master notes vote on the proposals and they allocate this budget which are uh, these half, uh, half a million dollars to approved, um, these approved uh, proposals on the network. So they vote it with yes, no and they can abstain as well. So, mm. so 
these proposals and the, the bots from the master nodes, they are not stored on the blockchain. Everything is stored on the master node network, which is the second pair network. Mm. Uh, this is uh, important part. Oh, what happened? Just press escape to get out of the... Ah, okay. So, let's take a look at the proposals from three days ago, I think. So this is a list of all proposals, not all of them, but the, the top 10 proposals. And we have this top proposal. The, the owner of proposal is Amanda B. Johnson, which is the host of the so-called Dash Details uh, show, which is hosted on YouTube. And she provided, <coughs> she sent a proposal to the network, which is, okay, uh, I need funding for the next month to provide this show to you, to the community, and for marketing reasons. And I need $16,000. Would you vote yes or no? So currently, this proposal is the top proposal on the network. So probably it's going to get approved as each time this happens, each month. Um, so the green proposals are already approved. And the red ones are, uh, are waiting for a more positive votes. So basically, there is a small trick in the voting system where you need at least 10% of the vote uh, to get approved because you may still have uh, enough yes uh, votes. For instance, here we have 500 yes and 200, 250 no's. Still, you, you don't have the, this threshold, which is basically the total amount of, bit of nodes, 10% of them have to, have, have to vote on your proposal, at least, so you can get to be included in the approved uh, proposal. So there is a, a one interesting proposal down here. This is reduce proposal fees from five dash to one dash. And <laughs> as you can see, this probably won't get approved this month, so, the master nodes, basically the whole community is against that because they they say this high fee keeps the propo the proposals more high quality. So and people don't spam the network with um, bad proposals or because as a master node, if you want to vote on each one of them, you have to go through the entire list, which may sometimes be a long list. Um, of proposals. So after the notes vote on this, these proposals I showed you earlier, they have to create the, to finalize their budget. So basically, they say at the end of the month, okay, we voted on these proposals. These pro these are approved. Let's synchronize everything. So the notes check if um, each note has the same budget inside. So they submit to the budget to their network and they vote on it. So if your node has a different budget proposal, we have, um, you need the majority of the network to approve your budget. So uh, this is uh, basically how it works. So um, you, the, the budget gets um, finalized and gets sent to the blockchain. And the blockchain, um, has this special block which is uh, part of the Dash uh, uh, protocol, which is called the super block. Uh, this block uh, appears uh, on average every 16,600 blocks or one month. So after the, you send the budget to this super block, there is this coin tra uh, coin based transaction gets created. This transaction doesn't have inputs. It's basically created from nothing, like a block reward. And this budget, which gets created in the super, super block, gets um, sent to the approved proposals. So when you propose, you make a proposal, you have to provide the address to get the fund. So if you're approved, this super, super block gets created and it sends the money to your address. So, but there is uh, sometimes, uh, let's touch on how much money 
to the proposals get. Uh, when there are not enough proposals, we, I mentioned there are $500,000 available for funding right now, but probably there won't be so many proposals to cover that budget. So maybe they will reach $50,000. Um, let's say they will reach this month $50,000 total of approved proposals. They're not there are not enough proposals to, to get the whole budget. So after finalizing this budget, the master notes send a message to, to the blockchain and, and say, we need $50,000, not with 500,000 as the budget uh, from the tape treasury. And the super block creates only that amount which is needed for funding of new proposals. So the super block will create only $50,000 and we'll distribute this money around uh, to, the, to, the, to the proposals. So if it happens the other way around, where we have too, much, too many proposals and the budget is higher, the proposals which have the lower uh, percentage of vote, which I talked about, which is 10%, if you have 10, 1.1%, your proposal will be one of the last ones and you won't get any money because they start from the top and go down um, with the funding. So the last proposals, even though they're uh, approved, they may not get funded because there is not enough budget for, for the month. So, Dash Evolution. Um, this is the, the future plan of the, of the Dash Core team. How should Dash look like in the next years to come. Um, so they've acknowledged these problems with blockchain technology and users where these open numeric addresses are not the perfect um, they're not perfect because people have to copy these addresses, send them between each other so they can get their money. Uh, the backups Keeping your private keys secret and doing these backups of your private keys can be sometimes um, tricky. Uh, and payments take time because of this exchanging of addresses and everything. And uh, basically, the average person is scared from blockchain and they, they want to address these, these problems. So, the dash becomes something like PayPal. Um, so how they're gonna do that? So this is the mission. The Evolution's mission is to make digital cash easy to use and access for all users, even those who are not tech savvy. Um, this is a uh, concept screenshot which is provided um, by the Dash Core team by Evan Duffield. This should be this could be the login screen of your new Dash wallet, which is basically a website where you can create your wallet. Basically it looks like every website where you enter your username, email, get verification, get your email verified, and you get this uh, eight word seed to back up your wallet. And this is the whole setup you need to do. Uh, after that, you have the, your whole dashboard uh, where you get different um, functionalities like you can you have the overview of your funds, your apps and your friends. So let's go over each one of them. Um, so this is the part where you keep your funds inside and the, the core team decided to create different accounts for the different needs of the users. So you may have this private funds account where you want to store money which are not traceable, uh, and this will happen in the background. As I talked, currently you need to download the core wallet to do the mixing uh, ahead of time and then send the money. After you set up this private funds account, you just deposit the money inside there and everything happens automatically. Um, you have this savings account where if you store your money there, you actually earn interest on that. But how you earn this interest? Because the savings account is part of this uh, master node shares uh, concept where because 
master nodes got so expensive to own. You, you, as a average person, you can't set up a master node right now. So after you set, set uh, deposit, let's say, a hundred dash inside this in Savix account, you get master node shares. So you share the reward from the master node with the owner of the hardware. So you may own a hardware but don't have the money to run the master node. So you share the whole uh, uh, profit from this master node, uh, depending on how much money you deposit in your account. So uh, you earn interest on that. Um, so Dash, the, this is the, like the app store for Dash, where different providers can sell you services inside their wallet. Uh, where you can buy a VPN or an email account. And the cool thing is uh, Dash wants to provide um, subscriptions as well. So you will be able to subs um, pay monthly for a service you want to buy. Um, so what's the design of Dash Evolution, um, basically? Uh, everything runs on the Masternode network, so there's no central server. And the, the developers, uh, they want to provide this API to um, outside parties like merchants or software developers. So they can plug into the network and basically deploy these functions on their website or start up accepting Dash um, online. Um, and it's called this DAPI. Um, the vision is like today's Stripe, which is a credit card provider, uh, where you as a uh, developer can play around with the API and create subscription-based payments or anything. They want to be this alternative of Stripe, but Dash, uh, so with cryptocurrency. So they, uh, the master nodes will start uh, providing other services to the network, like the Dash Drive, which is decentralized storage on the uh, master node network where they will implement sharding as well where you can split the data between nodes and copy it so it don't, doesn't get lost and it's distributed around the whole network. There will be a, uh, requirements for your storage device on your master node in order to be part of the dash drive on the network. But the dash drive will be basically the storage for the whole network uh, they, uh, the private, the master node network will provide users with messaging. So inside your wallet, where you log in, you can message other people uh, because you also get your name connected to your address if you want. So uh, people don't have to search for addresses. You have to search for names. You need. You can search for names. So I can search for Valentin.public, which is my public address, and I can send my, a message to Valentin. Or I can send you your money, sending it to your name without seeing your address at all. Um, which is the which are these name-based payments, um, basically? Um, so this uh, master node network will implement. Uh, master node forums, which is basically for providing services to individual uh, users. The network will always select 10 random nodes to provide the service to, to this user. This is done because of scalability uh, uh, reasons. So um, the devs uh, said uh, in, uh, in a paper that you don't, have, you don't need the whole network to verify your transactions when 10 nodes can do that as well and it's enough secure to do it. So basically they will run all, all these master node forums um, and run different services with these forums. This will help the network scale. And basically the blockchain stays in the background and uh, only records the, the last transaction or records the history of what happened on a master node network. So the, these master nodes will always uh, as well um, provide Oracle services, which is basically because of blockchains can't communicate with the outside world, 
um, the blockchain couldn't know what's the temperature or what's the stock price of Apple today. So these master nodes will implement a decentralized oracle where they're going to uh, get paid for that. Each service they provide, they get money for it. So they can provide a stock price for an app which is in your wallet as a oracle service. So basically this is the vision of, for evolution. Um, this is not uh, the final spec. Uh, the devs don't have the full code for, uh, provided to the community, so you can't know what will be implemented. But they are planning on releasing an alpha version of this uh, at the end of the year, uh, 2017. <coughs> so maybe we'll see what will happen with this plan. So this is basically Dash. Uh, uh, what? Uh, yeah. This is basically the whole picture of Dash. So if you have any questions, um, ask me. Um, just to note, I am not a developer. If you have tech-heavy questions for me, maybe I may not be able to answer them. Um, I didn't include in my presentation the part where this Instamind happened in 2014. Um, I may touch on that now, where uh, there was this software back in the mining software, where the network started creating much more coins than anticipated. So I think millions of coins got created in a matter of a week. So many people from outside communities uh, say Dash is scam because they have this Insta mine where the developers got so much money from that so they don't have to worry about anything and they they, they can buy many master nodes and vote on proposals with nodes so they get control of the network but uh, in, in essence this is not a, an issue from our, my point of, of view because uh, setting up so many master nodes uh, you, can't, you, don't, you didn't have the money at that time or the coins, not the money you didn't have enough coins to have so many master nodes which are as of today which already take up to four and a half million coins um, from the network so and the main developer Evan Duffield um, got from this insta mine around 250,000 dash uh, and many people ask him what are you going to do with so many coins uh, what's your uh, vision about it. And he said uh, he will probably uh, fund Dash related projects in the future, maybe after releasing the evolution. They, he's going to spend all his money on Dash related projects. That was his statement. So, this is a, the touch on um, the Insta mining problem with Dash. So, that's all. Thank you. Questions? So, I, I have one. Yeah. So, what, what about the, the. You told us about the governance inside the protocol where, where masternodes can work on certain proposals and stuff, but, but what about the governance outside the protocol? So, I guess there are different developers having different ideas on how that should, uh, should go along uh, over the next coming years. Is it separated like the Bitcoin is, or is the strong community um, going the same way? Um, the community is pretty strong. So the main discussions happen on the Dash forum or in, Slack, in the Slack channel. They are not that active on Reddit. So they first discuss um, the problems they have, and after that they submit their proposals. So the community believes that um, this voting mechanism helps them make instant decisions uh, in, in, when you compare it to Bitcoin. Uh, they even had a proposal on the block size uh, of Dash, which was uh, which is one megabyte, but uh, the core team, the uh, pro 
pro uh, proposed to increase the block size to 2 megabytes. Um, and the community voted uh, yes on that, even though they didn't implement this thing, but the core team said, if we need it, we're gonna do it, because you already voted on that. And there are not many, there's only the core team, which is funded by the blockchain, by the, they just provide this, um, they don't get paid, um, I think if Evan Duffield doesn't get paid by the blockchain, because um, he doesn't want to use the blockchain for earning money and this is only the dashboard team and they don't have like in Bitcoin that uh, Bitcoin Unlimited they are not they are one community with one developer team and they are pretty um, yeah their vision is always almost the same all the time so uh, if they fight about something, they just send a proposal to the network. And the dev state <coughs> has this problem with the five dash because they have a lot of dash to have stored. So, yeah, we f first of all, you uh, start a discussion on a forum and then you propose uh, the final proposal to the network. You send it uh, via your wallet. So, yes? <coughs> but basically, <coughs> that means. Uh, only if, if the, the core team is not sure we want to do this, then they, they make a proposal. Yeah, basically. But uh, they can develop or improve without uh, a proposal. So this part of evolution, I think it was a proposal from Evan Duffield a long time ago. So it is a plan, uh, it's already planned and it will be deployed. So if you want to improve something on the software, sometimes you don't need for the small changes to send a proposal to the network, but if you are doing a major change, they're basically sending this proposal to the master node network and saying, okay, vote on that, we'll see what, if the community likes it or not, we're gonna implement it. And the code is not prepared in a way that uh, some kind uh some, some settings, some point specs are automatically adjusting. So, no. if, for example, you said uh, five dash is needed for a proposal, and if they now vote for one dash, then the coin doesn't change automatically, it, it is basically a hard fork. Because no, no, uh, the, the, the value of a proposal is uh, hard for them. And this five dash, these are, this is a fee you pay to send a proposal. Yeah, but this you cannot lower a fee uh, as it is written in the code. No, you can't but lower without the fee. Releasing a that, that's code. why there was this proposal to lower the fee to one dash, so more people could uh, send proposals to the network. So this five dash, they get sent to the network as a fee. This is a fee you pay for proposing. I understand, but I mean this, this change cannot go in effect without no. release a half for wallet. No. Because old wallets would not be compatible with a lower fee for proposal. Yeah, that's right. You have to implement it. Yeah, isn't, isn't that a good idea to implement, implement mechanic, mechanics where you uh, define uh, it can be changed with a proposal without uh, need to change the code? Well, if they vote no on that, you're, gonna, you're wasting your time. If you're not sure if they're going to approve this change which you already no. If it is, uh, the proposal cost is five now, yeah? Uh, if the code would uh, say the proposal cost can be chosen by a proposal that is accepted, then there is no code change at all needed. It can be set by the community without any hard work to be released. Um, it's basic, they don't need a hard fork to change the because this is the second layer, this is not the blockchain, this is the master node network. So you just need to release a new client for the master nodes with a new fee which is required for a proposal. It's still a hard fork. No, all, 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 all master nodes no, have to update. Uh, the master nodes, they're the not, running, nodes they are not running in a blockchain uh, system. They're only a peer-to-peer -peer network which uses hashing algorithms to uh, secure all the transactions. So this is not a blockchain, a second blockchain on top of the blockchain. So it's basically a server network 
which can be updated uh, at any time without calling this a hard fork because if you don't update your client to the new fee you want, you, your client will just go offline. You're not forking off a, any blockchain. This is just a network where you, uh, if you don't keep up with the software updates, you go offline. So like the last, like the dip you showed on the, yeah, on the graph, dip right? Yeah, it's basically this update which some nodes uh, didn't update. Okay, they software. remove themselves from being able earning master nodes in kind. No, if you don't okay. update at one time where the majority of the nodes update, you're out of the game. Mm -hmm. You have to update to go online again with your master node. Okay. Well, but still it would be a possible scenario that there are two groups separating two master nodes communities, so to say, competing with each other, or, or not? Well, the master nodes are not communicating so much with each other. They are distributed around the world. They, they basically vote always in interest of the network, and they can't Maybe uh, you have to know a lot of people around, <laughs> I don't know, there was this uh, map, um, basic uh, formula where you can, yeah. So you have to know at least half of the network to influence uh, the vote, which is um, thousands of people. Um, it's difficult to coordinate such uh, vote, but it's possible. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not a blockchain, so it's possible to do these attacks. Um, yeah, <coughs> not, nothing happened uh, to today, but it's possible. Theoretically, you can 